It is so good to be here. My name is Dave Roberts, and I'm on staff at Moran Park, and we love having uh, Hope College people at our gatherings uh, on Sundays, and, and not just so much for the energy that all of you bring, but more importantly for the zeal and the passion that you teach us. We are challenged at Moran Park by you when you come, and it's a true blessing to be here. Uh, this place is significant in my life. Um, I did not go to Hope College. I went to another MIAA school that rhymes with Alvin. Um, But I came to the light, you can say, when I married a woman from Hope College 17 years ago, right here on this stage, right in this spot. And so this place has uh, significant memories for me. But also I've attended numerous chapel gatherings, numerous uh, gatherings, and I've always been impressed by the current staff, by previous uh, chaplain staff, the um, passion for Jesus. It has never been about a denomination. It has never been about just the college. It has always been about the good news and the grace and the glory of Jesus Christ. And uh, God has used this place, God has used all of you to not only shape Holland, but really shape the world through this place as you are sent out. And so I've been so impressed by people encountering Jesus in this place over and over and over again. And that is my prayer this morning, that you would encounter Jesus as we enter into uh, the reading of God's word from 1 Peter 3. Let's start in verse 15. Peter's writing to his friends, and he says this, In your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, not if, when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison. Because they formerly did not obey God when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. Peter's writing to his friends, to people who are scattered throughout modern-day Turkey, and he's writing to these people who have made Jesus the Lord of their life. And they have not just declared that with their lips, but they are living that way. They are living radical lives, holy, set-apart, distinct lives in a world that wasn't pro-Christianity. They're living differently, and as a result, they are suffering for their faith. They're suffering for the gospel, and I want to be absolutely clear here this morning that the suffering that they were enduring, the suffering that they were going through, had to do all with the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're not suffering because they're having a bad day. They sprained their ankle. They lost their job. They had a bad relationship uh, with somebody or, you know, something else in their life. They're not struggling because of that. They're struggling because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They had make a, they've made a stance on the gospel, and they're radically living that out. So Peter is speaking to those people who have done exactly what he said to do, make Jesus the Lord of their life. And here Peter says something that is absolutely foundational to us as followers of Jesus. People who have given their lives to Jesus Christ and want to live radically for him. And it's this, you will suffer. As a follower of Jesus, if you not only declare with your lips that Jesus is Lord, but you actually live like Jesus is Lord, you will suffer suffer. There will be people who will say things about you. There will be people who mock you, people who ridicule you, people who isolate you, all because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, sometimes I think we get to this place and we feel if we can just say things the right way or do things the right way, then we can eliminate suffering. Now, I am all for praying about and thinking through how we can say things and do things in the most loving way possible, but no matter what we say, no matter what we do, there will always be people in this world who don't like us because of our faith in Jesus Christ. And the reason is because we have an enemy. 
We are in a battle. We have an enemy, someone who wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Our battle isn't against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and powers of this dark world. And sometimes, though, he uses people to cause us to suffer. And no, some of you know what I'm talking about. You have taken a stance. You have declared that Jesus is the Lord with your life, and you are living lives boldly for the gospel. You are having conversations that are all about the gospel of Jesus Christ, and your friends or people that you know are ridiculing you, are saying things about you. You are experience, experiencing suffering. Some of you have been wrecked by the injustices in the world, and you are taking a bold stance and trying to bring God's kingdom into this space, and you're suffering as a result. Too often I think that we as followers of Jesus, we worry when we suffer. We worry, are we doing something wrong? Or should we be doing something differently? And we might even ask God the question, God, why is this happening in my life? And some, Peter even say, are suffering because they are doing evil things. But here I'm talking about those of you who are suffering for doing good. You worry like, I'm suffering for this. Why am I suffering? And I would argue that we should say, The opposite, we should be worried if we are not suffering for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We should worry if there is not suffering in our lives because Jesus, after all, said this. He said, woe to you when all people speak well of you. If they hated me, they're going to hate you. And so what you guys are wrestling through this semester is how do you find joy in the midst of that? How do you find joy in the midst of suffering for the sake of the gospel? And I would say there's two things. Two ways that you can find joy in the midst of suffering. And first of all, there is a closeness that comes with Christ when we are suffering for the gospel. There is a closeness. Paul talks about this in Philippians. And he says, I want to know Christ and share in his sufferings. I think back to those teenage young men back in the book of Daniel who were taken from their homeland, brought into captivity. And their names were stripped from them. Their their appearance was changed. But when they were asked to bow down to a big statue, they said, absolutely not. I'm not going to do that. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fire. And there, as they were suffering for their faith, the people that were watching, they were confused because there wasn't just three people in that fiery furnace. There was a fourth. And they said it appeared like the Son of God. And I would argue that it was Jesus with them in the midst of the fire. There is a closeness that comes to Christ when we are in the midst of the fire. Stephen knew that in Acts chapter 7 as he was being killed for his faith. He looked up to heaven and scripture says he saw Jesus in the midst of his suffering. Saw Jesus not seated next to God, which we often see that picture of Jesus seated next to God. Here in Acts 7, Stephen saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. There was a closeness in the midst of suffering that Stephen experienced. If you are in the midst of suffering, I would argue that there's a closeness that you can only experience with Christ in the midst of suffering. That's how we can find joy in the midst of suffering, a close relationship with our Savior, Jesus Christ. But secondly, I would argue that we can find joy in the midst of suffering because the gospel and the kingdom of God advances most powerfully in the midst of suffering. And it advances in us because Paul said in Romans 5, consider or rejoice in sufferings. I rejoice in suffering because suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope doesn't disappoint. God transforms us. God changes us. God shapes us powerfully in the midst of suffering. But most importantly, the kingdom advances through us in the midst of suffering as people look at us in the hope that we have, and as people mock us, ridicule us, the gospel moves forth and powerfully in the midst of suffering. All around the world where Christians are suffering for the sake of the gospel, the church is not declining, it is advancing. And this should not surprise us because Jesus paved the way for us. Jesus suffered for us, the righteous for the unrighteous so that we can be brought into relationship with God. So the very foundation of our faith is built on suffering. And Hope College, today, may you find joy in suffering. May you not resist suffering. May you not complain suffering. But may you experience the presence, the very powerful presence of Jesus Christ in the midst of your suffering. And may you find complete joy in knowing that as you suffer for the sake of the gospel, Jesus is gonna work in you to shape you and also work through you to advance his kingdom in this world. Let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you for the joy that we can have in every season of our lives. 
even in the midst of suffering. And God, I pray for my friends here at Hope College. God, I pray that in whatever situation that they're going through, Jesus, that they would experience you in powerful, powerful ways. That, Jesus, you would be real to them in the midst of their situation, in the midst of suffering. But even more than that, Jesus, would you make your name great through them as you use them as bold witnesses in this world, a world that so desperately, desperately, desperately needs Jesus. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. Go in peace and have a great day.